Good morning, church. So today we're reading from uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 to 11. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Okay, let's, uh, let's, um, let's pray. Lord God, we want to thank you so much that, um, that you are not only the God who hears us and hears our hearts and knows everything about us, but you are the God who speaks. And you speak to us in so many different ways. And Lord, we pray right now that you would speak, that you would speak to every single one of us, Lord. Holy Spirit, you're so welcome in this place. And we pray, Lord, that as we as we speak, um, or as I speak, Lord, that your words will go forth. We pray, Lord, that uh, seed will be planted and will germinate and, um, and grow. And I pray, Lord, mostly that we as your people will not just hear the word and walk away and forget it, Lord, but that we would um, really grapple with it, hear it, allow it to take root, and allow it to change our lives so we be, may become more like Jesus. So, Lord, I, I pray that I would only speak that which is um, of you and from you, and, um, Lord, that you would just be really ministering to us right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, WIC, what is our mission or our vision? What is the vision of WIC? Come on, it starts with a T. Yeah, transformed lives, transforming cities, right? This is something that the pastors, of, well, well, the whole congregation, the elders, we've been praying into. And we feel that this is what God is calling us to, to have transformed lives that transform cities, right? And there's a 10-year vision, and we're looking at a number of um, church plants from, from our, our current um, congregations to go and have a presence in a number of places all over the city, right? Now, uh, our focus for this year, as you've probably heard by now, is, sorry, um, Rick, can we just have my slides now? <laughs> sorry, thank you. <laughs> is empowered, all right? Empowered. We believe that God has um, called us this year to focus on empowered, Right, Christ-centered, spirit-led. But empowered for what? What do you think we're empowered to do? Why does WIC exist? Why are we here? To bring God's kingdom? That's, yep. Yeah, how do we bring God's kingdom? Share God's love, yep. Yeah. Fellowship of believers, yeah. But what is our purpose? Sorry? To make disciples, all right? Despite what some really, um, you know, famous preachers might have us believe, our purpose is not to have you meet your life goals. It's not for you to live, you know, your best life now and reach your own goals and build your life and build your career and, and, and it's all about you. That's not what the purpose of our life is. Not that there's anything wrong, right, to, to you know, achieve things and to, to be building our lives, but that is not the purpose of WIC and that is not the purpose of the church. When Jesus um, speaks to his disciples and he gives them his last words, his very last words, this is the purpose of WIC, this is the purpose of Wesley Mission, this is the purpose of the capital C Church. And we see in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples. That's our purpose, full stop. Go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely 
I am with you always. What's a disciple? We talk about a disciple. Well, what's a disciple? Often when we think about a disciple, don't we, we, we sort of think about, yep, those 12, those 12 that were kind of hanging around with Jesus and, and going all over the place. How do we describe a disciple? Because sometimes we think a disciple is somebody who's like, yep, I call myself a Christian, I've given my life to Jesus, um, but that's it. I believe in Jesus, so it's okay, right? I've got my insurance papers for heaven and that's it. Right, so you know, that's a believer. That's not a disciple, and there's something very, very different, right, between just being calling yourself a, a believer, a Christian, and a disciple. Right, we've been empowered to make disciples, and what is a disciple? The first and the, the first thing about a disciple is that you're in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Right, you have put your hope in Him. Right? You've put your hope in what he's done on the cross for you. You've said, look, I've been, you know, I, I'm sinful. I, I need you to wash me and cleanse me in your blood so I can come into this relationship. But it's relationship with Jesus Christ. And once you've done that, it is to study and live by the words of Jesus Christ, to walk in the ways of Jesus Christ, and to do the very works that Jesus Christ did. That's what we see the pattern of discipleship has been. Since for 2,000 years, that's what it's been. All right? Very important that you've got to be in relationship because guess what? There are a lot of people who like to do the works of Jesus or they love his words or they walk in his ways, but they're not in connection. First and foremost, being a disciple of Jesus means you're a child of God. It means that you're in relationship. There is a very human relationship. But that has got to change the way you live, right? And Jesus' passion is making disciples, right? The only thing that is going to matter two seconds after our death is the relationship we had with God and how many people we helped to come bring, bring to him and to grow in him. That is what our purpose is, church. That is what we're called. We're called to be in this loving relationship and to make disciples who make disciples, right? Now, some of you might be sitting there going, oh, you know, oh, the, the ways and the works of Jesus. Like, I, I can't do that. That's for some of you, you people. You get called and, you know, you go to Bible college and so you're the ones that, you know, you make disciples because, you know, I'm not holy enough. I'm not good enough. I, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, that's for those people over there, those holy ones that, you know, out there. Guess what? Jesus did not use the best and the holiest when he started his mission, did he? He takes some really rough, rough fishermen, probably living some pretty moral lives. He's got a tax collector stealing from people, doing what he wants. He's got a couple of guys who are so angry they want to call down fire on people. And he's got a prostitute in there. And those are the people that he chooses to start his mission with, right? If he can use them, he can use anybody, all right? And you might say, I'm not worthy. You're not worthy, but Jesus is the one who makes us worthy. So there's absolutely no excuse. Now you might say, oh, the, the ways and the works of Jesus, I, I'm just not gifted like that, right? There are people who, they've got, their, they've got these amazing gifts and they can go out and they do it and they use it and that's great and I'm just going to pray for them. But that's not an excuse either because the scriptures, the scriptures which cannot be revoked, says that every single person has a gift. There's not one Christian, if you have given your life to Jesus, if you worship Jesus, you have a gift. And it's a gift that is not to say, oh, look how great I am. You know, I'm God's favorite person. Look what he's gifted me with. I'm in such a special relationship with him which is sometimes what was going on in the Corinthian church, right? That's what was going on in the Corinthian church. And that's not what the gifts are about. That's what Paul is saying, no. One is not better than the other. The gifts have been given to you to build up the church. The gifts have been given to you to make disciples who make disciples. And every single one of you has at least one gift, if not 50. 
Because most of us have more than one, right? So the purpose of the gifts that we see from Scripture, it's to minister to one another, right? It's to minister to one another. And guess what? When, is, when we say minister to one another, what we are doing here, what we come to, we, we come and we have fellowship and we connection, but it's ministering to one another so that we can grow in our discipleship, so that we can grow to be more like Jesus, so that we can go out and be salt and light in the world, right? That's why we minister to one another and beyond, right? It's for the common good. It's for everybody. Our gifts are not for us to sit on and kind of go, oh, well, I've got this gift and yeah, I'm really gifted at it, but you never use it. They are tools, not toys, right? Tools, not toys. And it's for the common good. It's for the strengthening and encouraging um, and comforting of others, right? It is all for the other. And ultimately, it is for the building up of the church so that God will be glorified. Your gifts, every single one of you has at least one gift. You've probably got many more, but they've been given to you to build up the body, to make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. Now, we see in the scriptures, she says, well, okay, what, what is a spiritual gift? I don't, I don't know what this kind of thing with the spiritual gift is, you know, like when did I get it? What is my spiritual gift? Well, we see in scripture there's, there's two types of spiritual gifts that we, we kind of see in Scripture that are given to people. The first type of gift is what we call a residential gift. Now, this residential gift is given to you, and it's something that you just do well, right? It's what God has given to you, and, and you do it naturally, and you can, you can use that gift at any time, right? You can, you, you can apply that gift. So if, you, you know, if you've got the gift of administration, you just find administration really easy and you can do that and you can do it at any time. Um, you know, Jason, our, our admin person, I, I keep saying to him, oh, Jason, I don't know how you do what you do. I hate figures, I hate, I hate numbers, I hate all of that. And he goes, I don't know what you, how, no, how you do what you do. But we're both gifted and we can call on those gifts at any time, right? Now we see there's, there are a number of, of these gifts that, that are given in, um, in Scripture and in Romans 12 and um, in 1 Corinthians and in other places, some examples of the gifts are like serving and teaching, encouraging, generosity, leadership, mercy and compassion. I mean, you know, we, we, we see mercy and compassion and we know that we're, as Christians we're all called to be merciful and compassionate. But some people have just got abundant compassion, right? They just ooze it, they, flow, they overflow with it. Um, and that's a real gift from God, right? Helping, administration. Those are some of the gifts, but they're not the only gifts, all right? I believe that God gives his gifts when the church, when, when he's calling us to do what, what needs to be done. We could not be doing church in our day and in the season without, without the gifts right there at that table, the technical skills. We would not have been able to meet if God had not given like, I don't know how, I don't know how, you know, how Alan does it and is, I mean, I've tried to sort of work with him and I was just crazy, I don't get it. But that's Alan's gift. And if Alan wasn't able to do that, we probably wouldn't have been able to live stream. God's given that gift in this season and Alan can do that, right? Alan, that's, that's something that he can just get up and do that some of us can't do. Others of us can and that's his gift. But he's using his gift to build up the body. Right? That's what we call a residential gift. Um, and every single one of you have, have got it. Now, there's another gift, that, another type of gift that we see in the scriptures is what we call manifestations. Manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So what is a manifestation? A manifestation of the Holy Spirit is a supernatural display of God's power in and through a person. Right? Now, we all need the Spirit to help us with our natural gifts, but the supernatural gift, you can't just decide, the manifestation, you can't just decide, okay, I'm going to use this now. God, the Holy Spirit, decides when he's going to give you that manifestation. And it, you can have any manifestation at any time, right? We see in 1 Corinthians 12, 4-7, it says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works in all. So this is it. We see the church, right? We've got different gifts, 
There's all of you have got a gift. There's all these gifts that come together. We use our gifts to do ministry and to serve, to serve us, to serve each other, to serve the broader community, right? And to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit. Obviously, that comes through people. So, this, so, so you can actually be serving, and as you're serving, you can be praying for somebody, you can be praying for healing, and the Spirit can manifest healing in that person's life. It's actually got nothing to do with you. You've showed up. Somebody is sick, and you're praying for healing, and the Spirit manifests. Now, I've had the privilege of seeing people walk off their deathbeds, and I'm telling you, praying with no faith, absolutely no faith, right? And at other times, I've begged and pleaded with God to make somebody well, and he hasn't, because that's a manifestation of the Spirit, all right? And God gives it, the Holy Spirit gives it as we step out in ministry, all right? And then you, 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 you have these supernatural powers of We don't know why God um, does manifest in certain ways at certain times and doesn't, but we know that he is good and he works all things together for good. Right? The whole idea is that we have to, if we're, we're making ourselves available to use our gifts to minister to, to um, one another, minister to the world, this manifestation can come on anybody. Examples of the manifestations we see in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10. Word of wisdom, right? A word of wisdom is, um, you know, you just, you just get this supernatural word that you could never have thought about and you kind of hear it coming out of your mouth and you think, wow, that's been amazing. It's not been there. That's come from God as you're ministering to somebody, right? Uh, a word of knowledge. This is not general knowledge, right? In some of the, the gifts itineraries, they'll, they'll go, oh, you know, I'm very knowledgeable. This is not about general knowledge, right? This is about the Holy Spirit giving you a word about somebody or about a situation that you had known nothing about and you speak that word, right? So that it, it gets dropped in and it's, you speak it and it's from God. And what it is is it's supernatural. It's like, how did, how did you know that? How, how did you know that was, that was going on, right? Um, faith. Now, this is, not just, this is not just healing. This is not just saving faith. We all get saving faith when we come to Jesus Christ. This is a supernatural faith, right? Um, Sam Storms, who I'm going to quote later, he's a Baptist pastor, and he was what we call a cessationist. Now, cessationists, there are a whole group of Christians in the world who think that the gifts were for the time of scripture and not for now, right? So he was one of those. And so he really kind of delved into the scriptures and realized that's not biblical, right? That is not of God. The gifts are for today. So he's been moving very um, scripturally and spiritually, but moving in the gifts. And he says that one day this baby was brought to him. Baby was very sick. The doctor was saying was, the baby had just been born and just had huge, huge like liver issues. It looked like the child was going to really kind of die very soon. And he said as he was praying, he uh, was praying for healing, but he just had a supernatural boost of faith, knowing that this child was going to get well. Right? So sometimes those two gifts will come together. It's a supernatural. Um, we were in some Stephen ministry training yesterday, and we were doing prayers, and one of, um, one of those, the, the, the men over there, he goes, oh, I just know my prayers are going to get answered. I just know that that prayer is going to get answered. That is a supernatural act, uh, gift of faith that not everybody has, right? We're all called to have faith, but God gives supernatural. Healings, all right, don't need to talk about that. You, you rock up to pray for somebody, and you know what? The, every time I do it, I get shocked that God, God heals, right? Um, we, and it, he can do it over the, um, over the, the, the line. So uh, a few weeks ago, Joshua, I got a word that God was, a, a word of knowledge, that God was healing a hand. I'm like thinking, is this from God? Is this what, what's going on? I better get up and call it. Joshua's right hand was healed while he was watching TV. I didn't even have to touch and I just prayed, all right? That is a gift of healing. Miracles, amazing things happen. As we, as we, um, as we work, we, you know, things that just could not have happened in the natural. As we pray, as we rock up, God provides in amazing ways. Multiplication of food, you know? Um, there's people who've kind of been trying to serve, and they we, we didn't have enough, but all of a sudden, this appears. Or when some of our people have gone on a mission, they only had like 18 packs and 20 kids rock up and suddenly there's another two packs, right? That is miraculous. And they know they only had 18 packs. Um, discerning of spirits. This is a very important one, right? Because Satan is the great deceiver. 
not all spiritual activity is from God. And he will come in and he will kind of deceive. It's not quite right, but causes dissension in the bodies. And some people just have that gift of, of kind of the, the spirit will manifest and kind of go, yeah, no, something's really wrong here. This is not of God. This is, this is um, the enemy trying to, trying to do that. Different kinds of tongues. This is different to the prayer, uh, prayer language. God will give people um, a prayer language. This is actually when you get up and you speak and you speak a completely different language and somebody understands that language in the audience. Right? Um, I've heard people do that. Um, guy got up, started speaking um, in Persian, didn't know it, and there was a Persian man in the audience, and, and God spoke to that man. Um, I, I've heard a story of a, another chaplain starts praying for a person who's dying, he starts praying in tongues, and at the end of it, the, 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 um, the people who were the, in the family were in the room say, how did, how, when did you learn our language? And he goes, I, don't, I didn't. And he said, they said, because this is what you said, right? So it, that's an amazing supernatural display of God. So as the person is there, they know that God is present. It's supernatural. God is manifesting his power and he's doing his work. What did the, the chaplain have to do? Rock up and pray. God manifested in that moment. And here's the reality. God can manifest on any single one of you. Every single one of you can have this, these manifestations. The whole thing is rocking up, right? It can happen to anybody at any time. It's not, you're not super special if this thing happen, if, if these manifestations happen. You know, um, when, when the, the disciples come back, they say, oh, Lord, you know, it's so good. Even the demons submitted to us in your name. And he says, ah, don't worry about that. It's like, That's a given. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. But he didn't say, don't worry about the demons. Drive them out is what he's called them to do, right? So every single person, every single one of us can have these supernatural manifestations as we step out in ministry to make disciples who make disciples. Um, and we see this, we see this in scripture, right? The scriptures tell us in Acts 2, it says that, you know, in the last as God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people, not some. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit poured out on you and you can move in these manifestations and these gifts, right? Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams, and on, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirits in, on, in those days and they will prophesy. This is a bigger one, right? Mark 16, oh, and, and another one where Jesus likes, is, is in Mark's gospel, he says, and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. Let me hear this. All, not some, those who, who believe in my name. If you believe in the name of Jesus, these signs will can accompany you in your ministry, right? They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. This is the word of God. And I can testify, right? I, I never thought that I'd be worthy or could do any of this. I, I never thought, I thought, oh, I can't receive the manifestation. I've seen a number of these things manifesting and usually manifesting when I'm at my worst, right? When I'm at my least holiest and God really surprises me. And he, he can move like that through any single person. What we all have to realize is that it's not just us that are ministers of God. You are all ministers of Jesus Christ. Every single one of you is a minister of Jesus Christ. And you're called to be a disciple who makes disciples. You, in God's power, he's not going to call you to do what um, he hasn't empowered you for, right? The key thing, though, is to be in relationship with him. Because, you know, there, there is that very scary line in, in Matthew 7 where, you know, at the end of the age, Jesus says, um, you know, people come to him and say, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we drive out demons in your name? Didn't we do all these, you know, didn't we help heal people in your name? And Jesus will say to them, get away from me. I never knew you. So here's the reality with the gifts. God will use anyone. You don't even, you don't even have to be like super special. He will use anyone who's willing to be used. Unfortunately, sometimes people can have the wrong motives when they're using their gifts. And it can be about them and their ministry and me. And it's about building up me. And God gets pushed to the side. God still uses them, moves, perf moves mightily. But that's what I'm trying to get through to us is relationship first, 
but also that the gifts are a given. You don't have to be something, somebody super spiritual. You just need to believe in Jesus. And he, he can move through you. Your relationship with him is the most important thing. But that doesn't mean, oh, it's just about my relationship and I can just, just you know, don't worry about the gifts. No, he calls us to drive out demons. He calls us to heal the sick. He calls us to use our gifts. We, he calls us to step out so that there can be supernatural manifestations. Now, the um, the gifts that, um, that that we see in scriptures, the manifestations and the um, and uh, the residential gifts, you know, we have. But there's also God can use anything, and He's created different. You know, He's given us our personality, our passions, our past experiences, and our possessions. Right? So you don't just go, well, this is my gift, or the, we, we we need to look at what we call our shape. How has God shaped us? And every single one of you is shaped differently, right? We don't want to be carbon copies of each other because we don't need carbon copies, right? There are so many needs in the world, and God has given you unique personality, unique passion. I'm so glad we're not all passionate about the same thing because then people would, some people would just not be served, right? I remember um, one, one um, guy saying, oh, I'm just so excited about going out to China and going to live with these people that I don't know their language or anything. And I said to him, that, that is my worst nightmare, right? Right there, what you're talking about is right there. And then when I say, well, you know, I'm really loving going into hospitals and, you know, just talking to people, meeting, and he's like, that there is my worst nightmare. Different passions, different giftings, different personalities, but God gives each one for us to be disciples who make disciples, to build up the kingdom. And it's so important that you understand what yours is. What is your passion? What's your personality? What are the residential gifts God's given you? And what are the manifestations of being willing to move in them? Some people will, will move in certain manifestations more than others. Um, you know, some people kind of, they, you know, they get words of knowledge more and they kind of get used to that. So they, there are some people who, who, who will do it. But the reality is, is that these manifestations can happen to anybody at any time. The whole idea is to be open and to be willing, right? That's it, willingness. The willingness to say, the willingness to say, the stuff that I am pouring my time into, the, 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 some of the stuff that I'm wasting time on that's going to disappear at the end of this life does not matter. It doesn't matter. All that's going to matter is my relationship with Jesus Christ. And all that's going to matter is the number of souls that I've helped to bring to him and souls that have helped to be disciples who make disciples. That is all that's going to matter two seconds after we're gone. Maybe one second, right? Because that's what we're about, building the kingdom of God. And so what it is to say, you know what, I'm actually willing to create space and time in my life to say, look, God, I want to be a, a disciple who makes a disciple and, and you, you give the spirit. Um, I used to play pool with my dad, interesting, none, uh, many years ago. I haven't played for ages. But, you know, it's like the stick. You know, the ball is there. It's round. It's meant to roll. And it's meant to kind of push other balls, right? The stick is like the Holy Spirit. <sighs> Off you go. I'll give you what you need. I'll give you your power. And let me tell you, let me tell you, there is nothing, nothing, nothing more exciting when Jesus says, uh, after he's been speaking to the woman at the well, he says, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. I had this experience uh, three weeks ago with some people from our congregations, this congregation and the, the, city, the, the city congregation, here in Sydney, in Australia, in 2022. Really felt the Lord saying, you need to go out and you need to go out in my, in my spirit, in my power, Right? And um, basically, we asked God for visions. We asked him who was sending us to. And we, got, we had some children in there as well. And God gave us um, a number of words. One of them, uh, he gave this person three times. It was called Space Invaders, right? Space Invaders. Another guy got um, an Asian woman with blonde hair. Now, how many Asian women with blonde hair have you ever seen, right? I'm going, this is just weird. And as soon as one of the people called out um, Space Invaders, the little ones go, Time zone, right? Time zone. So, so um, we decided, you know, after praying and after getting these words, to go to uh, to Market City in Chinatown, in Sydney, in Australia, with just some ordinary 
believers who love Jesus and want to be disciples making disciples, right? We often hear about these things in Africa and everywhere. No, it's happening here. It's happening amongst us. So we get led down, you know, by God gives a whole lot of clues. We get led down and there um, at time zone there's a bench and on that bench is a woman who has looks Asian and has blonde hair sitting in front of time zone and in time zone behind that was the game Space Invaders. So I walked up to her and I said, look, you know, um, we're from a local church. We believe God has sent us to you, to, to specifically to you today. And I started prophesying. I started giving words, well, words of knowledge. And she goes, how do, you, how do you know this? And I said, well, God has sent us to you and he wants to speak to you. And the more kind of I went on, uh, and, there was, and it was Chinese New Year and there's a lot of noise. She's like, take my number. Another guy comes and um, one of her friends, she's waiting for a friend. And then we started like, it was ourselves and the kids were sitting there. We stopped ministering to this couple. Um, and uh, and I, I sort of said to them, look, can I pray for you? Can we pray for you? And we start um, praying. God starts giving prophecies. This woman's in absolute tears. And you could just feel the presence of God impacting that situation and impacting those lives, right? We talk about a person of peace. When you ask God who he wants you to go to, he sends you to that person, right? And this in case, I said to her, I'm not handing out pamphlets to everybody around here. God has sent me to you, right? And she was just blown away and could not believe what I was saying to her. That happened. That's one use of it. Now, all of us in the room, there was about six or seven of us, we together discerned. Different people were given different things. One woman was actually given the words that we needed to speak. And I only kind of worked that out later on when I was kind of typing it up. WIC people in Sydney, in Chinatown, a couple of weeks ago. If they can do it, so can you, right? Just, just Christians. Um, another example of this, right? We've got Stephen Ministry, and we're gonna we're gonna commission our Stephen ministers now. But Stephen Ministry, we um, we have what we call very private supervision. We don't speak about anybody kind of publicly. But uh, one of the Stephen ministers was saying, you know, I go into the session. I don't know what I'm gonna say. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And God gives me. He just gives me the question, or He gives me the word. I'm like, that's a, that that is a word of wisdom. Right? That's a word of wisdom. It's a supernatural inbreaking as that person puts himself out to, to, to doing ministry. A number of our people go out and pray for people. We see miraculously people getting off their deathbeds and coming to faith in Jesus Christ. Here in Sydney, in Australia. Right? And it's available to every single one of us and we're called to use our gifts. So, it's a very exciting year ahead. We're very excited. Uh, we believe that you're, um, we're all empowered. And um, so, but what we want to do is we want to help you because you might be sitting there going, oh, I don't know what my gift is and that sounds amazing, but uh, oh, not for me, I'm not sure. I don't know, what I'm, I don't know what I'm, how I'm gifted. I don't know what, 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 what I'm about. This year we want to help you to work out okay, in, in discernment because very often it's really good to discern what your gifts are in um in community right like i love to sing and i might think that i've you know got the greatest singing voice when i'm singing in the shower and people go like yeah no gene <laughs> don't do that right that's not my gift and so it's really good to kind of you, know, you feel like you've got a gift and then test it in in community so we're going to be having um you know we've got the spiritual gift study guide want to encourage your life groups to really get into it it gives a really good a biblical understanding of the gifts and how and why we use them. Um, we're going to be having a number of discover your gift sessions, so helping you to work out what, how has God shaped me? What are the gifts that he's given me? Also, what is your call, all right? So he's given you gifts. Where has he called you to go? We've got some material we're going to be handing out on that. And then opportunities for you to minister in the spirit, to actually go forth. You know what? God never called us to be boring. It is so exciting. I want to come back to that. Um, food to eat. When when we went out, we did that ministry. I came back. I'm like, I'm not. It was a lunch time. I'm like, not even hungry. And I remember what Jesus said: "I have food to eat that you know nothing about." And it was so beautiful to see a father speaking to his son. And he said, "This was like what Jesus did at the, with the woman at the well." Now, how powerful is that? A father discipling his son, going out and showing him doing the works of Jesus and showing him we can be involved in this. And the kids were like, we love that. It was so good. It was so exciting. That's the life God's called us to, right? Exciting. 
I want to end our, our, our um, time today with um, a quote from Sam Storms. I really, I really um, admire him as, as a teacher. He's, um, he says, you know, spiritual gifts are nothing less than God himself in us, energizing our souls, imparting revelation to our minds, infusing power in our wills, and working his sovereign and gracious purposes through us. Spiritual gifts are God present in, with, and through human thoughts, human deeds, human words, and human love. Jesus said it more simply, and surely I am with you always to the very end. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you are an exciting God that you've got a ministry and a mission for every single one of us. Your passion is for souls, and, and we thank you for those who had the passion for souls that have got us to this place, and all those who've journeyed alongside us and helped us to grow in understanding you. We want to thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we, um, we are, um, we've been called to, to make disciples who make disciples, and you don't send us out. You don't leave us on our own. You give us gifts to serve. Um, in, in many different ways, the way that you've shaped us. You've give, given us gifts to build your kingdom. And so, Lord, we just pray that you'll be just doing a work in every one of our hearts, that this word would not just drop and like, oh, yeah, inspiring, and off we go, but that you'll be doing a work. That 2022 will be the year where we get, where we get fired up in your spirit and in your power to do your work and to, do, to build your kingdom where you've placed us, to make disciples who make disciples, who make disciples. And we, we know that this is all um, all from you and in you. Lord, as we're now going to um, you know, commission New Stephen ministers, we thank you for this ministry and for what you are doing in and through it um, in our body and beyond, the way that you've been transforming those who are involved um, and what you're going to be doing in the future, Lord. And so we thank you for this ministry. We thank you for those who said, I'm willing and I pray, Lord, that as they use the gifts and the skills and the personality that you've given them, you'll be manifesting your presence, that people will just know um, your supernatural power and presence and that they will be giving their lives to Jesus and growing in you and becoming more like you. And I pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.